Hi guys, welcome to Scale Up. I've got a very special guest with me today. In fact, my most special guest, Harpreet. She needs no introduction. Welcome to Scale Up. Thank you for finally inviting me and I've decided I'm going to take over now. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Did you want to do the intro then? <laughs> welcome to Scale Up, guys. We're really excited to speak today. We've never actually done this before and um, we're going to talk a little bit about our businesses, aren't we? We're going to speak about a lot of things today. Obviously, we've got the business side. We've done a Q&A on Instagram. We've got so many questions that we're going to go on to. Firstly, before we do start, I want to do a bit of an introduction in terms of where you are with Osoya and what you're doing and how you're finding your journey so far. Yeah, I mean, it's been an absolute roller coaster. Um, my life has completely changed in the last 12 months mm -hmm. in many ways, more than one. Because you found me. Because I found you, <laughs> as well as many other things. Um, it's just been an absolute roller coaster. I've been working really, really hard, but I've got so much more to still work on. I'm obviously excited to talk about Also Yum. I always am. Um, but I think viewers will be really interested to hear a little bit more about what you do. I know that you went on The Apprentice with uh, the marketing agency that you run and own. What I think maybe a lot of people don't know is that that's not actually your only business, is it? No, you're absolutely right. I do have another business and I have been running it for a number of years now. It wasn't the business I went on the show with for a number of reasons, which I'll touch on shortly. And we're at a stage where we're growing it globally. Okay. But I'll come on to that later. So we've got a lot of things to talk about. Do you want to talk about business or personal first? You know I'm going to vote business every single time. I think we should flip a coin. Okay, fine. Yeah, let's do that. So personal. Why don't you do the honours? Go on. <laughs> so what's... Should I pick heads? Heads is uh, business, tails is... Who does this on a podcast? Heads is uh, <laughs> business, tails is personal. Wait, what do you do? Do you put it on there? I flip it. Should I just flip it for you? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, tails. So we're going to put personal first. Great. Fantastic. A lot of people want to know how we actually got together mm -hmm. as a couple. Um, how we met. So how do you want to start this? I don't know. Um... Well, I put a question and answer on my Instagram, and so did you. Yeah. Should we see what the top questions are that people are asking? Yeah, let's, let's, let's do that. Let's do that. Them. Let's begin with... Um... First impressions, this one. Okay. What was your first impression of me? First impression? I've got a couple. Okay. Okay. Yeah. First impression of you... Um, obviously, we met on day one on The Apprentice, mm -hmm. the day one of filming. And the first scene that we have is the waiting room. Mm -hmm. And I remember you sitting down, you were there before me, mm -hmm. and I walked in, I didn't look at anyone. Mm -hmm. I, I stood there strict and firm, just looked straight. I did see you and I thought, okay, cool. She's good looking, mm -hmm. right? But I thought you were sort of Arab, you were Egyptian. Mm -hmm. But I didn't think of it much. Then I just went into the boardroom. And then when Lord Sugar said your name, he was speaking to you and he said, how pretty, I said, huh? I didn't know there's a Punjabi girl here. <laughs> and I remember that picture very, very clearly. Mm -hmm. I remember you walking into the waiting area, first mm -hmm. time we obviously all meet. Mm -hmm. um, but we're not allowed to talk yet. No. But I smiled at everyone <laughs> and I smiled at you and you literally completely ignored me. Really? You did. I actually didn't know about that. <laughs> um, but no, I think I took that as, okay, he's focused, he's serious. Huh. And I just thought, yeah, game on. Yeah, we went into the boardroom and Lord Sugar says hi and you don't know anyone's name. And he said, hi, Akshay. And I just instantly thought of Akshay Kumar because he's my favourite Bollywood actor. Brilliant. Brilliant. That's a good <laughs> so start got for happy. me. That's a I good thought, start okay, for cool, me. another Indian. That's a good start. Um, and that was it. And then I think we didn't actually talk much until we were on task one on the cruise ship and we were all waiting. And I think we had a quick chat then. But we, we hardly really spoke, spoke much. I think, I think a lot of people don't know this, but we actually hardly spoke in the house. Yeah, not much I can at actually all. count the conversations. I think I've probably spoke to you about four or five times. Yeah. Because yeah. we never worked together on the same team, firstly. Yeah. So you're spread out. Yes. And even on the days, we, we had down days on the show where mm. you're not on task. Even on down days, you were always in your room. Did you like each other in the house? I'll let you go first. Um, I obviously was friendly with everybody. Mm. We obviously didn't get to spend much time together I won't in be the house. hurt if you say no, by the way. <laughs> You already know the answer. <laughs> they get, they get um, we didn't spend do any tasks together. No. I picked you in the final task to be on my team, which mm -hmm. seems to have gone viral mm -hmm. um, that moment because I thought you seemed like a really strong character, mm -hmm. very assertive, and I could kind of see that from the snippets that I'd seen mm -hmm. of you. Mm -hmm. But I spent a lot more time with the other candidates because mm -hmm. we were on tasks together, yeah. and we actually hardly spoke. So for me, I was just really focused. I liked you, obviously, you're Indian and, you know, we've got that connection. 
<laughs> but for me, I just was really focused on the challenge. I yeah. really wanted to win, and that's all I could see. Definitely. I think that's one thing about you. You were always switched on. Yeah, know? yeah. Did what you, about you? I'm going to flip the question back to you. Did you think I liked you? I had no idea mm. at all. Mm -hmm. And obviously, our relationship has developed completely after filming. Mm -hmm. And it's, what, been a few months. Um, has it been six months? Okay, let me know my anniversary. <laughs> um, I had no idea that you liked me in, in that I way. I haven't confessed it yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know you did. I did, and I'll be really honest with you. For me, it wasn't like, hey, I think you're great looking, that's why I like you. And you are great looking. But for me, it was whenever I heard you speak in the boardroom, I used to be like, whoa, hang on a second. That's brilliant. That is exactly the kind of girl I want in my life. Because mm -hmm. that's the mindset I have as well. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't there looking for a relationship or trying to find a partner, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Because mm -hmm. I was, like you, trying to firstly get out of the boardroom, because I was there bloody every boardroom. <laughs> Um, but every time you spoke, I'd be like, damn, this is so impressive. And as the process went on, mm -hmm. I sort of, for me, it was like, that is exactly the girl that I want in my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I knew that, that yeah. I wanted you and I liked you. But during the show, at no point did I ever make it out that I liked you or treat you any I'm differently so to others. Glad. You know? I'm so glad you didn't, because I'll be honest, I think if you did, yeah. it, it kind of would have... I, I would have avoided it a lot because for me, mm. I was 100% focused there for that investment and we're not on the violin, you know, we... Exactly. It's, it's not a, a, like a lovey-dovey show. We're there for different motives. We're all focused. Mm -hmm. But I liked you. And I, I, again, even after, I remember the last day of filming mm -hmm. where you and Catherine fought it out in the boardroom. I remember saying bye to you. And for me, it was just like, I can't wait to see you again. <laughs> but it wasn't, of, it, I didn't even ask for your number or nothing. No? I didn't ask for your number. You didn't? In fact, you were the first one who messaged me. I was? Yeah. I was. After a few months, can I add? <laughs> I didn't text you straight away. <laughs> and I was like, finally, she's realised. <laughs> <laughs> no, for me, obviously, we had that connection from the show. I was friendly with everyone. Mm. And then I hadn't heard, like, we hadn't really spoke for like a few months after filming. No, we didn't. And it was due to come on January this year. And I think maybe a few weeks before, mm -hmm. um, I uh, I managed to get your number and I reached out to you saying, Where's how you are you? Where did you get my number from? I got it from Akeem. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, Thanks, Akeem. <laughs> <laughs> um, I asked Akeem for your number because I said, let, you know, let me see how he's doing. Yeah. And then I think we, we got chatting from there, but not straight away. Not straight away. We not didn't actually, away. we weren't chatty at uh, all at the beginning. No, because again, we were so focused with our own work. Yeah. And even during the show, while the show was on, we yeah. hardly spoke, hardly spoke. And yeah. I think people would find that really surprising. Well, I, I found it really interesting to actually watch you on the television hmm. because I was never in task with you. No. We hardly spoke in the house. Hmm. So when task one came on hmm. and I was watching with my family hmm. and even my family were like, wow, actually it's really good. And hmm. it was even a surprise for me because I hadn't seen you in action hmm. and hmm. obviously you in the boardroom about five times. <laughs> So I, I, I just didn't really see a full side to your personality. Yeah, but yeah. when I did see you kind of on task, I thought, okay, he's pretty like, he's pretty cool. He's assertive. Um, he knows what he wants. And mm. I think that's when I saw a different side to you, was literally with the public watching you on television. Yeah, yeah. Let's do this one. Who asked who out? Well, I didn't ask you out. Go on, say the story then. Answer the question. <laughs> okay. So I remember I was obviously coming to London. I'd, I'd won the show. Yeah. I think I was doing a lot of interviews and things in London. Mm -hmm. I had a few events, mm -hmm. podcasts. And I think you asked me a couple of times, when are you coming to London next? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you did. And um, I think you said, oh, we'll grab dinner huh. um, next time you're down. Yeah. I panicked. I thought, yeah, surely you mean with the other candidates, right? <laughs> because for me, I, I was kind of a little bit scared because uh -huh. I thought, does he mean alone? Does he uh -huh. mean with the other candidates? So I think I must have said something, yeah, sure, we'll do something with everyone when we get the chance. And then I think you asked again a few weeks later, um, you know, I, I hear you're coming to London. I did my follow-up. You did your follow-up and you asked me for dinner uh -huh. and I freaked out. You said, you said, I can't do dinner, but I can do lunch. Yeah, I did say that on purpose. I know you did. <laughs> Because for me, I, I wasn't prepared to start dating. I just won the show. Mm. I was 100% full on with the business. Mm. And in my head, 
I'm not looking for anything else. Yeah. So for me, strictly business only, strictly professional. Mm. And if we want to catch up as friends over a friendly lunch, absolutely no problem. Yeah, so we had a friendly lunch. I remember we went to Westfields. We did. So I'd done um, some filming for a collaboration mm. with another ice cream brand mm -hmm. in Westfield Shopping mm -hmm. Centre, I remember. And I said, meet me there for lunch. Mm -hmm. We went to uh, a gorgeous Indian place mm -hmm. in there. It's called Bindas Eatery. It's mm -hmm. really nice. I definitely recommend anyone to go there and check it out. And the owner is lovely. And um, I think that's where we kind we of met. hit it off. And I think that's when we probably spoke for the first time. Yeah. You know, I think we hardly ate. We just kept chatting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, let's mix it up. Here's a business one. Go okay. On. Um, what advice would you give mm -hmm. to a young entrepreneur, 16 years old, trying mm -hmm. to scale their business? <clears throat> so I'm assuming they already have one. Mm -hmm. I would say to this person, you've got so much time. Spend time learning and developing your craft, doing research, get experience in your industry, and just understand that you have no limits. Just go mm -hmm. out there and think really big. The only limit that you really have there is your mindset, mm -hmm. you know? Don't think that you're just a 16-year-old. Mm -hmm. Why are you even thinking that? Yeah. Think of yourself as a business person, put your mark there and just go for it, yeah. you know? And you know what? You will make mistakes. Don't let setbacks stop you either. Agreed. You know? I think don't be afraid to fail. Failure is part Absolutely. of success. And um, there's a saying, you can almost fail your way to the top. Um, I think at that age, you've got literally nothing to lose and you can literally take any risk and it will be okay. So 100%. I think just go for it. 100%. Yeah. Do you support each other's businesses? For me, obviously, I've been that full on since mm -hmm. the show mm -hmm. that obviously my life is consumed with Oh So Yum. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, the biggest thing that you have brought to my life is support in terms mm -hmm. of you've just been so supportive, really just having my back at every turn. And it has been completely overwhelming. So I think what's great is not only have you just been supportive from an emotional aspect, but it's so good because we are both business minded. Mm -hmm. So you've added those ideas, you've helped me going, you've helped me almost develop certain strategies. Um, so, so for me, you know, thanks for supporting me. I don't have to say thanks. <laughs> for me as well, like, Obviously, because I run my business independently, I don't have a business partner. Yeah. You know, since I've been young, I've always run it myself. Mm -hmm. I've scaled it myself. So having someone to sort of bounce back ideas or thoughts with as well has been so, so really useful. And obviously, I'm going to come onto my business a bit later. Having your sort of insights and input has been priceless, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And even at you sort of saying to me at times, you know, why are you even thinking? like that think think even bigger mm -hmm. that's been really really good yeah i yeah. obviously have the benefit of having my sister in business i've mm -hmm. always had her to bounce mm -hmm. off the back of mm -hmm. um but mm -hmm. i think hats off to anyone including yourself that runs a business and scales that business by themselves mm -hmm. because it's really really not easy yeah. um but i think that's why we work you know one thing as well like it's so funny we we're, we're talking about this like yesterday or sunday we were both on our laptops at 1am working in our own businesses mm -hmm. and for me I'm so so grateful that I can do that with my partner yeah. if that makes sense because if it was someone who didn't understand my work mm -hmm. or how all my ambitions are it'd be really difficult because I'd be competing against yeah. relationship or work. I think it's also the journey that we're on and this point in our lives this is our time to work this is our time to focus 100%. we've both been on this platform you know 100%. i have an investment that i need to return mm -hmm. and i'm a very ambitious person and so are you yeah. so i think it's really nice that we can balance both business Definitely. and personal and have fun and Definitely. add value to each other's businesses Definitely. Yeah. what is it like to date in the spotlight and what led you to reveal your relationship good question really good question that didn't go for it Sure. Um, for me, I am typically quite a private person, which is quite strange because I went on this TV show. Mm. Um, but, you know, I like to keep my personal life private. Mm. But obviously, we're both in the public eye. Mm. And, you know, we want to be able to f like freely go for lunch or, you know, go for a nice dinner. Mm. And we were getting spotted a little bit and people were getting really excited. So I think for us, before we wanted any rumours to come out, about anything maybe even going on in the house or anything mm -hmm. like that, I think it was better just to come clean and say that we were sort of dating and seeing each other. Um, for me, I think I do find it quite difficult. I mean, even this conversation now, it's, it's very unnatural to me mm -hmm. to be in the public, like talking mm -hmm. like this. Um, but yeah, I think we're taking it easy. We're having fun and- Definitely. 
I mean, we yeah. get a lot of love when we're out from people. Oh you know, my god, the people. support! I got more likes on uh, we got more likes on our announcement post yeah. than I did when I won the event. Is welcome. <laughs> Thank you for the engagement. Yeah. I think people <laughs> love to see us together. They're really yeah. intrigued. And and I, think, I think it's just overall, not just like even Instagram, the amount of love and even the press has been so positive about it. It's, yeah. it's, it's really nice to, to get that attention because I'll be really honest, I didn't personally expect it. Yeah. I just thought it was like, okay, cool, we'll announce it so at least we can be a couple together in yeah. public. You're not conscious of someone taking a secret picture and leaking it into the press. Let's, let's end with a business question. I like this one. What are you guys working on now? Okay, that's a good one because I think we should talk about you first. Yeah. Everyone knows I'm also young and we'll come on yeah. to my updates in a second. For sure. But um, I find your business very interesting. Mm. It's something that I knew absolutely nothing about before until mm. getting to know you. Mm. I find it fascinating. Mm. It's completely different to what I do. And I, I think you should tell everyone about it. No, absolutely. So... I do have a marketing agency to start with called Sci Network and it was the business that I went on the show with to gain investment. Mm -hmm. But I also have another business. Mm -hmm. I actually run one of the largest sports betting prediction sites in the country. Okay. And we are a subscription business mm -hmm. and we provide sports tips for football, uh, rugby, cricket, tennis, all, all different kinds of sports. And I'm at this stage at the moment where I am growing it globally mm -hmm. and I'm relaunching my business. Well, not relaunching it because I do have the existing sites, but it's, it's going to be called Tips360 mm -hmm. and it's launching around December to January time. Mm -hmm. And we're going global with this. We don't actually facilitate any bets. I'm not a bookmaker. I'm not a casino. We simply provide sports betting tips from analysts, uh, experts and now is the time to really scale it up. Mm -hmm. So obviously I know about this already, mm -hmm. um, but it was even a shock to me because you mentioned nothing about this business when you were on the show throughout no. the entire process. No. So I think it will be quite a um, surprise to many people out there that not only do you have the marketing agency, yeah. um, but you do also have your uh, sports subscription um, model. But why didn't you go on the show with yeah. it and why haven't you mentioned it? To be really it? honest with you, it's a very simple answer. You're not allowed to take a betting business into the process. Yeah. And, I, and I wanted an investor mm -hmm. and I do have the agency and the agency has potential to grow. And I said, you know, I can get this investment. Mm -hmm. I can win it. So that's the business I went with, mm -hmm. you know, but I'm at the stage right now where my sports betting platform has really taken off. Mm -hmm. And for me right now, the focus is to take it to the next level. I think people would love to know, like, how did you start this? It's a really good question, Arbs. And um, for me, to be really honest, I, I run my marketing business and we run marketing campaigns with all sorts of clients. We've got fashion brands, you know, travel brands, but we actually run a lot of campaigns for betting and gambling brands. Mm -hmm. So I go to gambling conferences often and the idea actually sparked to me while having a conversation with a, with a contact mm -hmm. at a uh, conference in Malta. Mm -hmm. Now this guy um, actually runs probably the biggest tipping sites in the world mm -hmm. and while having a conversation marketing spend came about. And I just said to him, how much do you spend on marketing for mm -hmm. acquisition? So acquisition is when you get a customer mm -hmm. for your business, how much do you spend? And he says, yeah, we spend about $2 million a month. Wow. And that night, I promise you, I went back home and I couldn't sleep. Mm -hmm. I couldn't sleep. I was like, hang on a second. Firstly, how are they spending $2 million a month on just marketing for acquisitions? Mm -hmm. And number two, why can't I do that myself? Mm -hmm. So that really inspired me. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually in contact with him as well. So I started it really small while mm -hmm. running my agency a couple mm -hmm. of years ago. And while running it small, it's, it's grown, it's scaled. And I'm at a stage now where I've grown the business and I want to take it forward. I want to take it forward. And the idea for this is to build one of the biggest sports betting prediction sites. I'm excited. So obviously we went on The Apprentice. Mm -hmm. um, I got investment for my company. Mm -hmm. Do you not want investment for Tips360? That's a really good question again. I'll be really honest with you, Hobbs. Um, I'm keeping it open in terms of investment. Mm -hmm. I don't actually need the capital to execute the business because the business is running anyway. Mm -hmm. The model is proven. Mm -hmm. It's making money and I'm just reinvesting my profits back into the business. Mm -hmm. But I have big plans for it and I want to take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. And obviously for me, if the right investor comes along mm -hmm. that matches my vision, mm -hmm. I'm happy to look at it. 
definitely. Mm -hmm. But I'm not openly going out then to the market looking for investment just to fund my business, mm -hmm. to start it off, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, mm -hmm. you know? I know there will be that tipping point mm -hmm. where I need that growth to accelerate mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I will definitely go for a larger investor. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, of course. Cool. But it's, it's really exciting, you know, at this stage at the moment because I personally love this industry, mm -hmm. you know, um, the model works. Mm -hmm. And it's just a case about focusing and putting everything to it, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. No, I love it. Again, I think it's, for me, it's shown me a different side to you as well. I find it really interesting. Mm -hmm. So, as just a general like person, you're saying that this is launching December to Jan? So we're currently uh, redeveloping our platform mm -hmm. and working with developers, redoing the whole branding for it. So by December or Jan, let's say late December time, we'll be ready for this. So will you do like a launch or an announcement? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we'll have a big announcement in place. I am going to announce this on a, in, a, in a bigger way. But all I'm going to say is that I'm excited for it mm -hmm. and have some exciting plans for it. And it's cooking. You know? Oh, nice. It's cooking. You know? <laughs> that's, that's all I'm going to say right now. Yeah. But... It's just a case of if you find an opportunity, so it's about taking it to the next level. Mm -hmm. For me, it's, I've been running that business and it's got to the point where, yes, it does well, but I, I don't want to be content with that. Yeah. You want to take it to a different level, mm -hmm. you know? If you can get X number of customers in the UK, mm -hmm. why can't I get the same in Australia, in Canada, mm -hmm. you know, in Asia, mm -hmm. you know? So that's where all the mindset part plays in where you really have to mm. go for it. Agreed. I think we both connect in that way in terms of we always want more and we push ourselves to get bigger. Definitely, because mm -hmm. you have one life. Yeah. You have one life mm -hmm. and you don't want to be content, mm -hmm. you know, and it's all about who you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. You know, again, I was at that conference with that guy who said, I spent two million a month on advertising for his business. Mm -hmm. And that really made me question everything I did that mm -hmm. night, saying, mm -hmm. hang on a second. I need to really level myself up mm -hmm. because if this person can do it, why can't I do it? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not not to compete with that person, but not to even uh, not as a way to I can do better than you. You're you're running your own race. I'm running my own race, but it's who you're around with. Yeah, you agreed. Know? Yeah, but that's where I am with it basically. No, super exciting. Yeah, super exciting. Also young. Also young. Yeah. Uh, firstly, we're at your shop right now. Yes. And I just want to say how proud I am. <laughs> I know how much you went through with this, um, what you went through with the whole fit out mm -hmm. and how hard it's been mm -hmm. after the show. Mm -hmm. Because yes, you've got the external pressure mm -hmm. of winning the show, trying to show that, hey, Lord Sugar, I'm delivering your investment. Mm -hmm. But I just want to say how proud I am of that, of what you've Thank achieved. You. You know? Thank you so much. Um, you know what? It's a journey and it's just been absolute go, go, go. I think um, it's really overwhelming, actually. Um, just as a just as a person, a to run a business and grow is is difficult enough. It really is mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You know, with everything constantly changing all of the time, you have to constantly re-strategize and think of new ways to deliver your product to customers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, since I've got the investment. I've gone through a full rebrand. I've opened another store. I've rebranded my other stores. I've set up a nationwide delivery service. Um, I've got stocked in Selfridges Bakery. That was brilliant, by the way. For me, business is, is it's impossible to be an overnight success. Mm -hmm. It's a journey. Mm -hmm. And I think I often get a lot of questions saying, well, what's next? What are you doing now? You know, what's next for Also Yum? Mm -hmm. um, when are you opening another store? It takes a lot of time, effort, investment to create even that one store. Mm. Um, so it takes a little bit of time mm. um, and I've got lots in the works, um, which I'm really excited to reveal mm. and share. But for me, I'm in it for the long term. I don't want those quick wins. I yeah. want to make sure the business that I'm building is sustainable mm -hmm. um, and it's going to deliver that return consistently. Mm -hmm. So the platform has been amazing. And what I absolutely love is when people see me out and about, mm -hmm. everyone knows that I have my business is also oh yum. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people say to me, you know, also oh yum in the street. They don't even say my name. And I love that. Um, which is exactly what I went on the show for, to promote my business. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited for the growth. We are actually just launching our events range. Um, so if anyone has like a hen party, baby shower, Christmas party, office event, mm -hmm. you know, we can do like personalized individual boxes of the cookie cups and brownies. Um, that people saw me on the show with the cookie cups and since then I created that mm. and um, sell those and they, they're just an absolute hit. They're a bestseller. 
So um, I'm doing those as individuals now. So if anyone wants to have also yum at their event, they can get in touch, which again is a new strategy Absolutely. within itself. Yeah. You know, it takes time to set those processes up to make sure I can deliver well for the customer. When I first set up the business, we were there seven days a week on our feet and we close at like um, almost midnight every night. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of hard work involved, but I'm at a stage now where I, I have the luxury of stepping back a little bit and looking at how we can grow it. Growth. Yes. Um, but I'm not just going to try and do everything and anything. I want to look at a strategy, assess whether it's the right one, yeah. um, and then absolutely kill it. Makes so yeah, sense. events is where we're at at the minute. Um, and I'm really excited to see how that goes. No, I'm sure you'll smash it. Obviously now, being in the public eye, what other pressures do you deal with mm -hmm. running the business? Mm -hmm. I mean, running a business is tough enough. Mm -hmm. For me, I think it's the added pressure of a lot of people see me as a role model now. Mm -hmm. And I get so many messages all the time. Um, but I find that quite a little bit difficult to juggle because I I'm a businesswoman and I'm running my business and I'm growing that. And there's all these platforms, you know, we've got Instagram, Facebook, mm -hmm. LinkedIn, um, your email, and as a business owner, you have multiple email addresses for your different departments. You know, you've got WhatsApp, messages, phone calls. Mm. It's really hard to juggle. And I get a lot of messages and requests of people saying, can you come to this event? Or can you speak here? Um, you're really inspiring. Mm. Um, or just general messages where I have inspired someone. And honestly, I'm so, so grateful and blessed. And if I can make a difference to someone's mm. life and motivate them to reach their goals, Honestly, I love that because I'm 100%. all about people achieving the best version of themselves. 100%. I think you try to do your best as well. Yeah. I know how, how passionate you are about inspiring people, mm -hmm. sort of like how you speak to people, and I absolutely love that. Hopefully, I'll get more time to do that in future. Hopefully. I've got a few speaker events coming up. Um, so, yeah, maybe next year I'll have a little bit more time for that. Definitely. Yeah. And is that where you sort of see yourself later down the line? Mm-hmm. I think anything is possible in the future, you know. Um, right now, there's so many possibilities with mm. Oh So Yum. Mm. I can't wait for it. But I'm the type of person that likes to juggle a few things. So, you know, when I, when I can inspire others and hold events, who knows? Maybe I'll do some at Oh So Yum. I love that. Yeah. So that's enough of business chat. Mm -hmm. I've actually got a fun game for us. Mm -hmm. We're going to play Mr. and Mrs. Let's do it. Okay. Let's do this. Who drinks the most tea? Hopri. Who is the most likely to break things? Hopri. No. Yes, you. Who thinks they are the most perfect? Hopri. <laughs> no, that's not fair. Who is the most likely to start an argument? Definitely <laughs> you. Me. <laughs> Who is the funniest? Hopri, you do not realise <laughs> jokes. <laughs> this character is the funniest person you'll meet. <laughs> the stuff she comes up with. Who gives to charity the most? I think both do. Who has the best manners? Me! Who's most <laughs> likely to swear? Swear. I think it's equal. No, don't say it. Let me be a lady. <laughs> <laughs> and Ray's knows how much she swears. I can show you. Yeah. <laughs> Who has the most beauty products? <clears throat> Capri. Who's better at baking cakes? I I'd hope it's you. It's definitely <laughs> And I'm me. expecting a crepe. Have you ever baked a cake? I don't think so. Yeah, those kits, you know those... Have you done a kit? Those kits you get in yeah. lockdown. Who is the greater animal lover? Uh, I think we're both equal. No, I love animals. Yeah, we can both be it. Okay, He's fine. vegetarian. I'm vegetarian. I'm vegetarian. No, oh, I'm not. <laughs> I eat fish. <laughs> Who was the best behaved at school? I have great. Me. Who is the most easily fooled? I have great. Who likes Chinese food the most? Me! Oh god! <laughs> One Chinese I'm sick tonight. to death of Chinese food! I want Chinese tonight! We're not having Chinese Who does the most talking? Oh my god! <clears throat> who's, the mo uh, who's the least forgiving? I think we're equal. <clears throat> I'm really forgiving. <laughs> Who owns the most shoes? Heartbreak. Hands down. Okay, you don't need to be so passionate. <laughs> Who sneezes the most? Oh, actually, you know what? I oh, actually feel like sneezing Is right it? now. Yeah. <laughs> That's so weird you ask that question, man. Who's most likely to be travel sick? That would be me. I think you. Yeah. For sure. Who complains the most? How great. Who wastes the most time? Definitely you. I feel Excuse like you. Excuse me, where? 
Right, you faff a lot. Wait, with what? You do. With what? I don't want to say it. Give example. I don't really want to go into a full example. No, please do, because you have not. I feel that sometimes you do take quite a while to... You are fake news. So Who is the calmest and most relaxed? Definitely me. <laughs> <laughs> Who drinks the most coffee? That's me. I need it. Definitely. And it goes really well with cake. I don't actually drink coffee or tea. No. Mm. Who is best at remembering birthdays and anniversaries? I don't have a clue what our anniversary is. 100%. I'm so sorry to say that Next to you. Next question. Who is the best at saving money? Neither of us are. We like to spend it. Who wears sunglasses most often? Even indoors. What? You do. Who is generally the most punctual? Me, 100%. Okay, I missed one date. That's it. He's got to be in his bonnet about it. Who would make the best referee? Me for sure and I'll tell you why, because I'm fair and he gets really, really passionate and he makes up these weird rules and things. Who most enjoys evenings at home? I think you do. I like staying at home. I think Humphrey does. Uh, who's got the most bad habits? Neither. Okay, that was fun. I definitely don't have the most bad habits. Okay, I beg know. to differ, um, but fine. But thank you so much for tuning in. I think this was really fun and nice to talk about us. So don't forget to check out Tips 360 when it launches. We are going to try to do more business content together. So make sure you subscribe to our channel and thanks for tuning in again. Bye.